panel of Bookish Heart with Shauna. I'm so excited to be presenting the first installment of a brand new segment I've decided to feature on this channel, which is going to be Library Chat Wednesdays. This is going to be published every first and third Wednesday of the month, so twice a month. And it's just a casual time when we can chat and all things about libraries. So it's all library themed and this is something that I haven't really seen people do on YouTube channels. So it's something I'm going to try out and today I'm going to show every all the books I have out from the library and talk about them. So I guess I'll just get started. So sorry about the lighting. It's like I said, it's just nighttime here and it's supposed to be kind of casual. So this book is Interlibrary Loan, which is a service I really love that libraries offer where if, okay, my library is a small town library, so I love my library, but sometimes they don't have a good selection for the books I want, but they partner with all the libraries in the region. So you can put in a request for a book, and if any of the libraries have it, they'll request send it over there for you to borrow. So that's really neat. So it really helps them so that each library doesn't have to buy every book, but they can still provide it to their patrons. I find that a really good service. So this is the second book of a book that I read in January and it's a historical fiction. It's called Wars of the Roses. That's the name of the series. This is book two, um, Trinity. It's by Con A. Golgan. It's like Game of Thrones without the fantasy, without the dragons. Um, it has all the political intrigue, the battles. I was not expecting to like the first book as much as I did. So I'm very excited to start reading this one. The next book I have out is another interlibrary loan called A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. And this one... Um, I actually started, but I'm not that far into it yet. This is a book club pick. So I'm very excited. My library book club is starting up again this month. I've been attending the book club for years now, um, in person, but when COVID hit, we stopped the in-person meetings and it was, they tried to do it by zoom, but many of the members of the book club just didn't have the time or weren't on Zoom. So it kind of fell to the wayside, but they've started up a new book club there um, with a new person running it. And this was the first book pick. So after the book club meeting, I'll definitely be talking about it in my next Library Chat Wednesday segment. So that's this book that I have to finish reading soon for the book club chat. Then I'm very excited to show what else I got today. It's still in the bag. So I picked up some surprises from my library today. This, this is really neat. This is for my kids and there's three of them because I have three boys, but I like that my library does this. So this is a Valentine's package with like crafts and a pencil and some surprises in there. So that's from the children's department of my library. And I like that they do that. They, they're trying to, they know that people are stuck at home during COVID. So they're trying to do like themed craft bags. They had Christmas one. They had, um, I believe Halloween one. Every time there's like a holiday or event, they're doing activity bags that you can take for your kids. So that's really neat. Um, this is Oh, it's small. This is a book that I ordered. I didn't, haven't looked at it yet. It is called A Morbid Taste for Bones by Ellis Peters. It's smaller than I thought. It's like a pocketbook edition. Let's see if I can take this thing off so we can see the cover better. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the cover of it. So it says, the first chronicle of Brother Cadfail of the Benedictine Abbey of St. Peter and St. Paul at Shrewsbury. But I saw this recommended randomly in a Facebook group that someone said it was very good and underrated. So I think it's historical fantasy. 
So that's just a book I'm going to be reading. It looks like it won't take too long. It's under, under 200 pages, so that'll be easy to bump up my books read for February. And the last one I'm very excited about. So this is something that I've seen other libraries do in bigger cities, and I actually suggested it last year. I sent a screenshot to my library saying you should do this. And I guess they're trying it out. So it's called Blind Date with a Book. And they give you, they wrap up some books and they give you like a brief description of it as if it was like a tag for the book's dating profile. And so you pick which one you'd be interested in. And then you're supposed to open it up and read it and see if you like it. So it's kind of like you're on a blind date with the book and you don't know what to expect. So this one, they have it all wrapped up nice. So pretty. It's like a present. So this one, um, I picked Thriller. They had five categories you could pick from for the first round of this. It's, it has Bernie Sanders with his mittens. And it, for the picture, it says, Book, Bernie Brings Work Home, a thriller. Location, smitten with mittens, location unknown. And the description says, Milling around as if they were about to start a parade where at least 50 North Vietnamese Army regular soldiers. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to see what it is. And next time on the next segment, I'm going to tell you my thoughts about it if I have it read by then. I feel bad ripping the paper because it's so pretty. <laughs> I don't want to rip it. I don't want to rip the paper. I just want to keep it all nice like a present. Okay, I did not look at this yet, so I'll show you. Brad Taylor, All Necessary Force. Beyond Special Forces lies our last line of defense. I haven't heard of that or this author. So it's, what is it about? Okay, I'm going to read the description because I'm very curious. So if you don't want to hear this, you can skip forward in the video. A terrorist hit is coming. The CIA, FBI, and Department of Defense systems have spiked, but traditional intel is going nowhere. It falls to the task force, a top-secret team that exists outside the bounds of U.S. law and is charged with finding and destroying asymmetric threats to stop the unknown conspirators. A shadowy trail leads the task force through Asia and into Egypt, where an attack leaves one hardened task force member dead and another barely breathing. Pike Logan and his partner, Jennifer Cahill, are forced to helm the increasingly convoluted and dangerous mission, a mission that tests Jennifer's ability to justify means to an end and Pike's tenuous ability to stay in control. Sifting your way through the opposing plots of two terrorist organizations will turn out to be the least of their problems when a weapon of unthinkable power touches American soil, the only country in which task force members are forbidden to operate and the only country that Pike Logan may be unable to save. Told with unparalleled realism, informed by Taylor's decades of experience in Special Forces and Delta Force, All Necessary Force takes readers on a terrifying and relentless journey. So that's the description. So I haven't read a good thriller for a while, so I'm very excited to see what this is about. So currently, yeah, currently this is my library book haul. I'm hoping I can get through them all before they're due back. Support your local library. Mine just reopened. They were curbside pickup only for the pandemic. Libraries are a very great resource, so go check out your library. Thanks for having this library chat with me, and definitely check back soon. I'm excited to provide more segments like this. If there's anything you have, any questions or any feedback about it, please put it below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night.